Hello everyone. Welcome back to Sewing Machine Rehab. We are continuing with our restoration of a Singer 301 or 301A. And today we are going to actually finish removing parts from the nose of the machine. And we will get started on removing the needle cover and the feed dogs. But before we do, I want to point out a little part that I missed a couple videos back. So we removed the bobbin winder and the bobbin uh, winder parts. And I don't know how I missed it other than it's painted black and it blends in really well. And uh, I forgot to talk to you about the bobbin winder stop. So I was taking apart another 301 just the other day, and I realized when I took the bobbin winder stop off that I didn't take it off of this machine. So to explain it briefly, the bobbin winder stop is this little piece that you see up here. And um, like I said, this one's painted black, so it blends in. How it works is as you're winding your bobbin, there's an arm that comes out, the bobbin is on the arm, you flip the arm up, and there is a little stop here that's adjustable. And basically all it does is it allows you to control how full you are going to fill your bobbin. So if your projects tend to take less thread, maybe when you're filling a bobbin, you don't want to wind it completely full. If you're quilting or something, you know you're going to use the entire uh, bobbin of, th of thread, then you probably want it to be fuller. And the way that you adjust this little piece is there's a little screw here, and just by loosening it, you can move this little piece up and down. And so the higher up it's on your machine, the fuller your bobbin will wind, and the lower it is on your machine, the less thread you'll be able to wind on your bobbin. So really quick, I will take this piece off, and I will just actually add it to the bobbin winding parts bag. I pulled that out before I got started, and I'll include it with the rest of the bobbin winding parts that we bagged up earlier. So, sorry I forgot about that. So today, like I said, we will be working and finishing, uh, taking out the parts that are left in the nose of this machine. And really all we have left, uh, since my little incident with the presser bar lifter, <laughs> uh, all we have left are the thread take up, the system here, uh, part of the thread take up system includes this arm, which attaches to the needle clamp. And I don't remember the technical term right off the top of my head for this part. I want to say it's the needle bar driving arm, but I could be wrong on that. So the way that this works is if you were to turn your hand wheel right now, you would see a counterbalance that's inside the nose that spins around. So all those parts are working in uh, unison with the hand wheel, which works with gears in the top of the machine, moves down to a shaft that this crank is attached to and spins it around. This, which is clamped to your needle bar, is what is moving your needle bar up and down as you sew and then this controls your thread take up. So this is what we're going to remove. It's pretty simple. You do need to have the right tools. Uh, I would advise if you haven't done this before, go ahead and spray the screw that I'm getting ready to show you because we'll have a screw at the top of the machine that we're going to remove. And then we have a screw on the counterbalance itself which I don't have it turned the right way right now, but there's a screw on the counterbalance up here that we're going to remove. So if you start taking a quick 
peek at your counterbalance, what you will notice is that the widest part of the counterbalance, the part that the arm isn't pushed into, there's a screw on the top side of this. So if you spin it up around, you'll see there's a big screw. That's not the screw that you want to remove. Actually, if you turn the widest part of this counterbalance so it's facing the back of the machine, and then you look down in here, and actually there is a hole. And let me move my light and see if we can get a peek at it. Up, oh, I see it. Do you see it? It's right in there. You can see the slot of it. That's the screw we're gonna get to. And so obviously you don't have a lot of clearance inside the machine to work a screwdriver. So this hole in the top of the machine is so you can access that screw. And that's what I am going to do. Now I want to talk to you about the screwdriver that you're going to use because you really um, need a uh, heft a little bit heftier screwdriver uh, compared to what I'm actually gonna use. And the reason why I don't use it is because the shape of my screwdriver, this tapered out edge here, is too wide to fit through the hole in the top of the machine. Um, well, actually on this one it's not, but on the appropriate screwdriver it would be. So I always have to bump it down a size smaller but it still seems to work. And I cannot stress enough to just spray these screws with some penetrating oil uh, a little while before you plan on doing this. Let that work down in. If the screw is stuck a little bit, that will help you to work it free. So I've loosened the screw on the counterbalance above this arm. And now I'm also going to loosen the screw at the very top of the machine, which I'm not sure if I pointed that out, but right here, this one. And it is also left to loosen. Thankfully, most of them are. So uh, this is a little bit longer, so it will take a few turns when you finally take it out, but I'm just going to loosen it so I can slide this whole piece out at once. So the way that this is designed, there are two metal posts that are pushing into holes in the machine. You can't really put one in and then the other in. They sort of have to be lined up and put in at the same time. So this one will start to go in first and this one will start to go in second, but they finish at the same time. So once I have that loose, I'm gonna give it a little bit of a jiggle because I know that these parts are oiled and oiled often more than likely, so they can be a little stuck. And you don't wanna pull here really hard. You don't wanna stick a screwdriver in here and start prying it out. Just spray it with oil and wait and be patient. And then just a little bit of wiggling and tugging, it will come out. And you can always check to make sure uh, that you have loosened one of the screws, like if it's giving you some resistance still, just double check that you got the screw as loose as it needs to be to come out. And I'd had this out once already. <laughs> so there we go. Okay, so sorry about sticking my hands in your face. So this just pulls out. And the reason why you want to take this out if you can is because it gets really nasty <laughs> and dirty. And actually when I took this out the first time, there was a bunch of threads that were wrapped around this arm and slipping down into this gap here where it presses up against the thread take up. So I removed all of those, and now since those are off, I will clean them. You can just slide this arm off for now. So remember, this is your thread take up. It goes in like this. This arm slides on, and your needle bar clamp goes into this hole here, and then your needle goes through it, and it runs your needle up and down. So this is off. We can set it aside and go ahead and remove 
the set screws all the way now. And you could remove them all the way right away if you wanted. There's no reason why you couldn't. And I just like to keep my hand nearby because if I drop the screw, I can catch it. And there's my first set screw that goes into the um, counterbalance, forgot the name. And my second set screw, which is longer than the one in the counterbalance, so I don't have to worry about mixing these up at all. I'll know which goes where. Set those aside, bag them up actually. Get them out of the way. And before we move on, we have one more part I'd like to remove. And it's optional. You can clean around this if it's too much of a pain to remove it. But this is the um, tension releasing lever. So remember when we had our tension on and we took it off and there was the stud that went inside the hole that had a tension releasing pin, a little bit, it was like a toothpick, but shorter sort of, very little skinny rod. Um, so this lever is what presses on that pin that moves in and out when it's pressed again it, against this, your presser uh, lifters up, it presses the pin out, pushing the tension disc open, letting the thread flow between the tension disc freely. When the presser bar is down the, and the lever is down, then that pin is pushed back uh, because of the spring inside and um, then your discs are tighter together and you have the tension that's appropriate for your project to sew. So anyway, I like to take these off and clean um, the parts because they get oil dripped on them. The trick is getting this screw out because if you can see, I'm coming in at an angle and it is left to loosen and I just kind of start here at the bottom with a smaller screwdriver and I can twist it free, generally no problem. Um, if it's stuck, you may just wanna leave it. Uh, and I have ones that are, or I have had ones that were a nightmare to get out. You just never know until you try. So this is our tension releasing lever. It's actually functioning on a hinge screw. So we've seen several of them now. So this lever has the hinge screw slid in. The lever's operating on the smooth, unthreaded part of the screw. While the screw itself is screwed into the body of the machine, it stays stationary, but this can rock back and forth. So here's my tip for you. Bag this part up with your needle bar parts. And the reason why is because if you don't do that, you may get excited and put your needle bar in first, and then guess what? You've blocked access to this tension releasing lever, and you've set your needle bar height, and you have to take it out and do it all over again because you forgot to put this part in. So I bag this with my needle bar parts, so I just see it once they're clean. It's a reminder to me to put that part in first, then I can put in my needle bar. So. We have finished removing all the parts in the nose that we're going to remove before we start to clean the machine. So congratulations, good job. Now, while we are on this end, I want to go ahead and remove the needle plate and the feed dogs. And when I say feed dogs, all I'm talking about are these little sets of teeth here that move back and forth and how far they move is what determines your stitch length, which we set with a, a lever on the front of the machine. So here it's set at the longest length and you see it goes a quite a distance before it comes back and starts over. But if I bump it up to a smaller stitch, you can get sometimes little to no, this is like the very fine stitches. So this is hardly moving at all, which is how I get a really close fine stitch. So to take these off, um, just remember that they are chrome plated. So you can just loosen these, they're left to loosen. And 
This one's a little bit of a funny angle, and I actually have a, a tool to show you that you could use on this, but I'll show you when I'm doing the feed dogs. Um, so once you get them raised up a little bit, you should just be able to grab them with your fingertips and spin them right out. And we'll set those aside. So this is our needle plate. And when we lift it up, um, you can look at it, check it out, see how much you know damage it has. Uh, check the underside. We're gonna clean all of this. Normally this isn't what's too super dirty. Normally what is super dirty is down in here. And this machine um, I purchased from someone who liked to play around with them a little bit. And I believe that they actually must have cleaned all the lint out of here because it was surprisingly uh, clean as a whistle. So, uh, but don't be surprised if you find a lot of lint and, and other threads stuck down in here. That happens. Uh, and that's why you should know how to remove this so you can get to this area. And I really like to vacuum it out, to be honest. I don't recommend blowing air into these areas because all you do is blow lint into other parts, uh, mechanical parts of the machine. So you can use tweezers, clean it out. You can use a little brush uh, and then just give it a good vacuum and you're good to go. But here we have the... Uh, feed dogs now we can see them a little bit better and these screws are a little bit more difficult to get out and sadly they seem to be kind of soft compared to some of the other screws so i have a tool um, from my friend bob fowler and um, it's what i'm going to use to remove these feed dogs and you can find tools like this this one is a craftsman but there are other brands out there there's just so little clearance that you need in order to use this little tool. It really makes things a lot easier. And just do the second one. And take a second. These, I've had many of these that I have had to spray. Um, because they were just kind of, this area can get pretty gunked up with oil and of course it dries and hardens and it sticks. So here are your feed dogs. That's what's moving your fabric. The two screws that uh, holds the feed dogs down onto the machine and guess what? They are the same. So there's not a right or a left. So you don't need to worry about remembering which goes where. Um, and so take a good look at this. Check out the teeth. I've had to run, you know, a toothpick or even like a needle or something through here to dig out just really packed and limp before. So while you have them off, clean them up really well. Get all that old stuff out before you put them back on. So essentially that's it. Now what we have left, which I'm going to save for another video, is how we will remove the uh, rest of the bobbin area parts. So we'll be taking off the hook. And um, I think I'll do that one only, that will be the only thing that I do in the next video, um, just so I make sure that we don't go too long and I have enough time to explain how to do it. So I really do appreciate you following along. Um, I love it when you leave a question for me, if I can help, with an answer, I, I will try. And guess what? There are other people watching too who might be able to help as well. Please remember to like and subscribe so you know when we have the next video out. And I hope you have a great day. See you soon. Bye.